Hi, in this video we're going to show you the E3 revision management tool. E3 revision management allows the user to control release and changes of a project whilst maintaining trackability and access to previous versions. As you can see here on the screen, I've just quickly created a project with um, just a simple harness and I've created two sheets. So I've actually got the form board sheet up and I've also got a schematic up just with the logic within it. I've got a bill of materials that I've just placed. Now the revision management tool, quite simply, um, it's just a drop down toolbar. As you can see here, we have a revision management. So to start off, what the first thing we need to do is release a project. So if I zoom into the bottom here, you can actually see uh, our revision bar. So you can actually see your status change date. So that's what's going to populate it automatically. So the first things first, I just have to go add-ons, revision management, and then I can come down to project release and select this one. Once I've done so, I just have to confirm my language. Yeah, in this case, it's going to be British English. And then after that, we have a few different options. So by default, the modification options or indexes are set at letters. However, um, the text file can be modif modified quite easily to change to whatever you like, whether it's numbers or alphanumerical or whatever else. So in this case, we're just putting starting with the version. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter because it's AA, but we can actually modify it as we need. So after that, once again, we've got different um, modification numbers that are accessible. So these are just the two defaults, which is just a release and a change. So I'm just going to stick to release. And then after here, I'm just going to go initial uh, release, username, I'm just going to power jump, and date, I'm going to leave. And if I had options or variants, I could actually select something here. So I'm just going to click OK. Let it load. Okay, so once the PDF has been created, um, you can see here that the pop-up will come up and tell me that there is a uh, PDF located in the location of it. Um, so I'll just open up the directory where my project is saved. So I've just saved it under this CT. So the project name is example. So the folder example was created. Um, now on the output, it will show me this PDF. I'll just open it up and it's basically just the project in a PDF, um, just as we've done. And the sheet is just selected by the default that's actually selected in the options. Um, so also down the bottom, uh, I'll show you the project, it's probably easier. Um, it's actually populated this table over here. As you can see, so the status is just AA, which is just representing the first revision, the first version. And then after that, you change description, so initial RL for initial release, the date, and the user who's actually done that. So once I've done this, I can actually go through and make a change, uh, assuming I'm changing a project. So in this example, I'm just going to get this X3 connector. I'm going to rename that to uh, connector 3, for example. And at the same time, I'm actually going to change the connector in the project. Now the easiest way to do that is to go to device properties. Once there, I can actually select the component here and I can type in a new um, component or I can drop down and search it. So I know I want to change it to a DT06. I want to maintain a four pin, so I'll leave it four and then I'll just see what my options are and I'll just select the um, 4S. So I can just hit apply and as you can see pretty quickly, it's replaced the new graphic at the same time, changed the name and added the new device name. So you can see with a red dot, it's actually moved the connector. Um, the DT04 has a longer body, so the graphic comes up to here. So in this example, it's actually changed. However, we're just going to leave it just so you can show a bit better the differences. The other thing we're going to do, I'm just going to update this bill of material. Uh, so like bomb, let's put it up here. And then I'll do the same for the second sheet to update the changes. So my schematic sheet, you can see here, connector three has been updated automatically. The pin symbols are different for the DT06 in this database. I'll just redo the bomb. I'll put it specifically in a different location. So once I'm happy with that, I can actually um, decide I want to make a revision. So I can click on revision ma management, modific modification revision. Um, so I'll just change my Excel, uh, confirm I want it in English. 
you can actually change your output languages if you want a different language to the project language that can be done as you can see there's a few bit of options otherwise you can add the second language or third or fourth as you, as you need to so once again these can be changed so they're just letters but you can change it to whatever else so my original is AA so I have to go to AB to the next I'll change my modification number to CH200 which is just the change code and I'll just put change it's just by default that user I'll just assume it's another user so it's PJT2 uh, using it and then I'll click OK <clears throat> so it's going to rerun everything and then it's actually going to ask me for a reason for my modifications to update into um, the documents at the same time it will create a new sheet uh, which is just a revision sheet which shows all the changes in the projects so that sheet will keep adding on as you go so here I'm just going to go my reason for change is connector changed to suit and the name changed also and then I don't have to type it again it's the same reason for the second page I'll just select the thing so you can see here that actually sheet one sheet two um, or schematic in sheet one has been created and they've identified these changes in both sheets so if there's only one sheet that's been modified it's just only going to show you but if you've got modifications over multiple sheets it will ask you for a reason um, and then obviously if it's the same reason you can just select if it's different reasons then you can update accordingly I'll just click OK now after that it's actually going to create four different documents for me an Excel spreadsheet, a TIFF, and two PDFs. So you can see, once again, it's given me the um, notification to say that everything's been created. So I go back to my folder where the example um, project is stored. So under outputs, you can see now there's actually um, five different documents. So the original released version is still there and it will still maintain each different version as you progress. So the first of the documents, I guess, is just the um, AB revision um, PDF which again basically like the first one is just a PDF version of the document so you can see the new connector there and, and the change in, in um, location you can actually change these to black and white should you need to um, there are a few options so you can make it a bit or we'll customize it to your needs the other document is the TIFF which is quite a handy one so as you can see here is a graphical comparison between versions um, and then it will show you these three. It's got a legend, so the black represents your um, things that aren't changed, and the red is something that's been deleted, and the blue is something that's added. So you can see here, obviously this part is all the same. Uh, the TIFF document is low quality, so it stores all the information. It doesn't take up too much space. You can actually change the resolution of the TIFF document should you need to. Uh, so you can see here the DTO4 part portion is left and the DTO6 4S has been added. Same as the connectors in replace of X3. And you can see the symbols have changed as well. At the same time, the tables uh, are different locations and obviously they contain different information. Same goes for the second. Uh, you can see the target information has been updated also to represent the new connectors. <coughs> and... Um, the graphic so once again like I said I didn't move it so you can actually see the difference in length in the two different connectors as well as the tables uh, further to that there's actually a change PDF or a vision management change PDF which isolates just the different information for each particular um, change uh, what's been moved and it's um, referenced here to the new sheet same for the second project is actually reference a symbol removed this graphic changed accordingly or symbol view removed if that's the case so update everything as necessary and then the last thing is a PDF Excel spreadsheet Excel spreadsheet actually identifies each particular thing and it shows you uh, the location as well so sheet 1 uh, position 8E and same for schematic at D8 as well. So it goes through each different change, the old value and the new value if it's applied. So in this particular things that these have been deleted um, and then you've got the new ones that have been deleted, that added. So same as the connector. So the connector D3 has been removed and now it's connector three. It tells change difference and then the value of your symbol moved. If you had um, 
changes in your pins it actually tell you to and from so if you change the logic in your circuit it actually update the uh, changes as necessary as well as the conductor number so it's pretty dense and this will again will once again start to um, add every time you make a revision it will add a difference so this is just revision a b and each number however as you go it's going to start adding everything else to your project and you can see here the uh, sheet created so this is just a simplified version which shows you the reason and your changes so obviously change um, in your location for your project so further to that you can actually um, compare so if you've got different versions or quite different versions you can actually do a free comparison um, on them at the same time, if you do a change in your project and, and call it something else. So if you've got two different projects that are different, you can actually do a free comparison. So similar to the TIFF document, it will actually isolate the differences in your projects and highlight them for you. So if you've got a large project and you've got two different versions saved, um, you can do a free comparison and it will identify your um, situations. So further to that, there's also the configurator. Uh, I won't go through it too much, but the configurator has a fair bit of customizability. Um, so as far as comparison, so there's a whole lot of options in here which you can select or deselect for comparing your different changes in your different objects. Um, your language settings can be changed a fair bit. Um, so as far as I said before, so you can change your different um, modification numbers and, and your text, your predefined text in there as well to make it customized. outputs as well so there's a fair bit in here um, as far as display and what you want shown and how you want it shown and everything else so there's a fair bit you can do with that so as you can see the e3 revision management is a quite uh, powerful tool it's quite simple it doesn't take too much into it um, but it allows you to update your project as required and while maintaining full trackability uh, as you go it will add new um, lines to your uh, title block. Uh, now this is just a default sheet. So if you had yours, for example, as a lot of people do up here in this location, you had your table that populate as well in the same sort of way. Um, so once again, you can take advantage of E3 series database and the way it's used to customize as necessary. If you have any more questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, please visit powerjumptechnologies.com.au and let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.